Okay, is my voice audible? Vijay, Surjit, Darshana, Ajit, and Kelvin, is my voice perfectly audible for you? Okay, good evening. Can you hear me well, everyone out there? Okay, good. How about you, Darshana, Ajit, Kelvin, and Vijay? Vijay, Suji, uh, Darshana, Ajit, and Kelvin, are you able to hear me when? Okay, good. Okay, fine. All right. Now, so yesterday we are going to continue from the theories of management. Yesterday we have done contingency theory of management, right everyone? Today we are going to deal with another theory that is quality school of management. Okay, so shall we start with it now? Shall we begin with it? <coughs> so the quality school of management is a comprehensive concept for what is meant by comprehensive comprehensive means what anyone what is the meaning of word comprehensive So it's like all aspects of something. Yeah, broad, broad, correct. Comprehensive concept for comprehensive means covering all aspects of something, most of the aspects of something for leading and operating an organization. So the school of management has got all the principles which will help in the smooth functioning of an organization aimed at continuously improving performance by focusing on customers while ad addressing the needs of all stakeholders. In other words, this concept focuses on managing the total organization to deliver high quality to customers. So according to this theory of management that is quality school, um, you know the total organization should be managed in a better manner so that they can deliver high quality services to customers. Fine. Now the quality schools of management consider the following in its theory. Organization makeup. Organizations are made up of complex systems of customers and suppliers, right? Organization will have customers and it will also have suppliers. Every individual executive, manager and worker functions as both supplier and a customer. Right? Quality of goods and services. Meeting the customer's requirement is a priority goal and presumes to be a key to organizational survival and growth. See, if the organization is not able to meet out what, what the customer wants and if they, if they are not able to cater the customers properly, in that case, if this persisted, then that organization won't be in, uh, you know, they will, uh, won't be there, right? Right? They will get bankrupt, right? So it should always be a priority in order to have, uh, you know, growth, in order to have good, good growth of an organization. Continuous improvement in goods and services. See, uh, mistakes are the integral part of life. Even the organizations can make mistakes, the people working in the organization. And sometimes what they chalk out, it might not be a success thing. But they should improve, they should learn from their mistakes. They, and this is how they can improve continuously in terms of goods and services. Right? Recognize, just a second, just a second please.
disturbance okay so see if an organization is not able to meet the needs uh, of the customers properly if they are not continuous see every day they uh, the customer will demand for something else right and if your services are not getting better with time nobody you know there will be someone else who will you know cater the needs of the customer in a better manner right right everyone right sujeet darshana ajit kelvin praveen and prabha continuous and improvement in good and service regarding in recognizing the need to pinpoint internal and external requirements and continuously strive to improve it is an idea that says the company is good but it can always become better so all the companies are good if they are not striving hard for becoming better they won't be in race anymore right they will finish employees working in team see if the employees are having their personal you know issues with each other and they are not working in a team project won't be completed they won't be able to serve the customers properly right so these groups are primary vehicles for planning and problem solving so team management is also very necessary and everyone should work as a team keeping aside their personal rivalries or wedges if they have one fine developing openness and trust confidence among members of the organization at all levels is an important see if the confidence is not there in any level that level will suffer you know every level should work do their work in an appropriate manner so that you know the project can be completed on time and if any of the groups is lacking behind the whole project will fail right so that is not required at all right okay so this that is why they should work in team developing openness and trust confidence among members of the organization at all levels is important condition see if the uh, you know like workers are not uh, they are not uh, trusting each other in that case you know they won't share relevant information with the other one in that case the whole project will suffer again so it should be there right trust should be there openness should be there fine now employees working in teams this we have done quality management involves employees in decision making as a way to prevent quality problems fine the kaizen approaches uses incremental continuous improvement for people products and processes the reengineering approach focuses on sensing the need to change seeing change coming and reacting effectively to it when it comes so reengineering approach says that if you are going with a good product that's okay you are satisfied with your product customer but you know if the change is coming you should be able to sense it out and then you have to uh, you know respond appropriately you have to make relevant changes to the product if required fine is it clear both approaches are described in the following section the very notion of continuous improvement suggests that managers teams and individuals learn from both their accomplishments see it's not like only my mistakes will teach me also my accomplishment has to teach me it it is um, you know it is like a learning thing right positive and negative things both teach us something we have something to learn from good things in our life and bad things in our life right quality managers help their employees gain insight from personal work experiences and they encourage everyone to share with others what they have learned i'll come to it i'll come to the kaizen's approach or should i deal with it now only okay so let me tell you what kaizen's approach is see the kaizen approach it symbolizes our commitment to the philosophy of continuous improvement which we employ to help our customers so it like they say that continuous improvement is being required okay this is what they say kaizen approach continuous improvement it is the practice of continuous improvement fine okay now uh, let's deal with this kaizen approach since you have raised this matter so uh, i would like to do this in brief fine okay so let me put the notes related to kaizen approach in on the next board okay now what is kaizen kaizen is a is a, in japanese character kaizen is a japanese word meaning continuous improvement so this word is not indian in origin neither it's latin in origin it means continuous improvement it is a japanese word it is made up of two characters in japanese kai which means change and zen which means good 
you might have heard about jain buddhism right everyone it is being practiced in uh, many parts of china japan right although it has originated in india right so zen means good and kai means change fine everyone sudeep darshana ajit kelvin praveen prabha and vijay do you have any questions for me okay it is it is used to describe a company's culture where everyone from the ceo to the front desk clerk regularly evaluates his or her work and thinks of ways to improve it see if if every member if every employee in an organization whether he or she is a clerk peon or a ceo is evaluating their work regularly and they think of ways to improve it the company would be it would be very productive for the company right the company is going to make millions the concept is that small steps on a regular basis which lead to a large improvement over time see it's not like see if i have got the habit of drinking wine i just cannot leave it all in one day right is it possible no we cannot change habits in one day eventually we can stop right right so this is what they are saying just a small uh, if you really want to uh, make large improvements you should start making small improvements first this is applicable in our day to day life also if you want to quit something suppose you want to be a very good cook okay you should do you know it's not like you just cannot cook good food like your mother in one day right this is being expected from every you know new daughter in law that you know why there is always a tussle between most of the daughter in laws and mother in laws in when it comes to indian uh, people um, you know indian kitchen because mother in law she thinks that she should cook like me right which is not possible at all you know what you have learned in 20 years how can i do it in one day if she can understand that there won't be any tussle right so uh, yeah eventually one can learn this is the concept which is being uh, which you need to understand here eventually we can change over time right if you really want large improvement over time you should take small steps for the same fine everyone is it clear everyone so ji darshana ajit kelvin praveen prabha and vijay fine clay kazen is a slow but ongoing process of improvement see it is very slow one step at a uh, you cannot uh, you know climb thousand steps in one time you will climb one step at a time right so it's a slow process but it is continuous you know you are climbing one step at a time you will surely reach the last step which is like the thousand step right but it is an ongoing process not a blitz or quickly implemented set of changes the improvements are suggested by the person doing the work not an outside evaluation team so see according to this case in change okay one can you have to assess yourself you have to do introspection and you have to do changes on your own nobody is going to evaluate you and will ask you to change fine if a worker has a problem to address or is considering whether the change will make sense he will he should pull in several team members for a quick discussion and brainstorming session and then decide see if you want some changes in your life and you are not sure whether it would be good for you or bad for you in that case you should discuss it with among your friends or colleagues and then you should decide all right but the, you have to change yourself you have to assess it okay and then you have to um, you know take small steps at a time so that eventually you can change yourself completely fine is it clear welcome uh, jemin and nixon how are you today we are doing uh, you know qualitative theory of management okay so under that uh, there is one uh, you know like uh, one thing with the name kazen's approach okay one terminology so i am explaining that as well fine is it clear what is uh, kazen's approach everyone out there is it clear vijay prabha praveen kelvin ajit darshan and suji how do you implement kazen it is important to note that kazen is a way of thinking not a project to complete it is a way of thinking you can think that okay i am going wrong in the direction i am doing overeating suppose i am overweight you can assess your eating habits you can keep a check on your eating habits and then you know you cannot cut down if you are fond of sweets you cannot cut down sweets in one go right you will you will decrease it the intake and eventually a time will come you won't take it anymore right 
So Kaizen is a way of thinking because it, it has to do with change in yourself. To implement it, all the employers should receive training on the concept of Kaizen and should have some guidelines in terms of what they need to do before implementing a change. Okay. For example, it may be fine for an office worker to change his or her handling of paperwork without any discussion. A change in the production process though may impact multiple teams and should be discussed with the impacted parties before implementation. Fine. In addition, um, if you think that something can uh, make a company, um, you know, if something, if changing something, um, you know, can, uh, uh, you know, if you, if you are, if you want to change something in your, at your workplace, okay, and if you think that that will be beneficial for the company, if certain, if it, it will affect, you know, multiple teams, then you should discuss it with teams. I don't know, Nixon. I'm not sure about it. Uh, please talk to the coordinator about it. You didn't got the link as well, or it was just not there on Facebook page. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure about it, but that is really confusing, no? I'm really sorry about it. I'll just tell the coordinator about the same. Okay. I'll post your message to her. Okay. We'll ask her to not to do it again. Otherwise, lot of time is being wasted. Okay, now. So, if a teams are getting affected, if other people are getting affected because you are making certain changes in something, okay, um, uh, something in the office, then you, you should inform them. Fine? Is it clear? Otherwise, their work will be affected because they will never know what you are doing exactly. Okay, unless and until you are going to inform them how they are going to know. Right. In addition, most production steps will be subject to safety regulations and will have detailed documentation on accurate performance. And these needs to be in place before a change is being made. It is also important that management be trained and be behind the effort. Kazen will result in many more suggestions for improvement and changes and will take from a rigid focus on moving items quickly through the existing production process. Management must be ready to accept some time away from the current work to focus on changes with longer range impact. Is it clear what Kazen effect is all about? So Kazen uh, is a new way of looking at things and as with any change, things can go wrong. Here are some common issues with implementation. Okay. So Kazen is like making changes which can be productive, small uh, one at a time so that um, you can make the complete change in after some time. And it is an ongoing process although slow. Fine. Yeah, so we were doing about Kazen. Quality, uh, this we have read. Kazen is the commitment to work towards steady, continual improvement. Okay, the best support for continuous improvement in an organization of people who give a high priority in learning. In this process, everyone in the organization participates by ident identifying opportunities for improvement, testing new approaches, recording the results, and recommending change. So, before the changes are being made, uh, you know, you should one should test on it, right? and then record the results and if results are appropriate then only it should be recommended. The re-engineering approach to management focuses on creating change, right? Big change and fast change. It centers on sensing the need to change, sensing change coming and reacting effectively to change when it comes. Okay, so re-engineering is like change is the need of an hour. Okay, one thing cannot go in the similar manner as it is going whether it's a product or company. Change has to be there. So one should recognize the need for change then they should implement the change and then they should accept it fine this is what re-engineering approach is all about re-engineering the radical the radical redesign of business process to achieve dramatic improvement in cost quality service and speed requires that every employee and manager look at all aspects of company's operation and find ways to rebuild the organizational systems to improve efficiency sometimes you know the old system might be very slow so you need need to rework on that so that you can improve the company's productivity. Re-engineering re is neither easy nor cheap, but companies that adopt this plan have repeated remarkable, reaped remarkable results. Fine. Re-engineering efforts look at how jobs are designed and raise critical questions about how much work and work process can be optimally configured. Although many people believe that re-engineering is an euphemism for downsizing or outsourcing. This is not true. Yes, downsourcing or downsizing. Downsizing means what? Cutting down number of employees. Or outsourcing may be 
by pro by product of reengineering however the goal of reengineering is to bring about tight fit between market opportunities and corporate abilities right so if market opportunities are there you can only avail it uh, for future as well if you are really good with your product if your product is pinpoint in needs to the in needs of the two needs of the customers right after organizations are able to find this fit new job should be created is it clear what this qualitative school of management says there is a need for change right and change cannot be bring in one day we cannot change in one day so it should be small okay continuous one so that one day we can reach to the overall change okay oh uh, okay so this was quality school of management now let's see video related to the same okay All right. So this is the video for the same. Okay. So you need to watch this video. The link is there in the chat box. Kindly see it, and then we'll switch over to the next part. That is management in future. Kindly watch this video. Are you watching that video, everyone out there? Okay. And once you are done with it, just let me know.
everyone out there is my voice okay are you able to hear me surjeet ajit kelvin prabhavati vijay jemin okay so is this much clear is this is much clear to you great fine now management in the future modern management approaches respect the classical human resource and quantitative management approaches to management however successful manager recognize that although each theoretical school has limitations in its application each approach also offers valuable insights that can broaden a manager's options so see each theory has its own limitations but it also broadens the perspective of a manager right okay each approach also offers valuable insights that can broaden a manager's options in solving problems and achieving organizational goals successful managers work to the extent extend these approaches to meet the demands of a dynamic environment so they employ the theory till the extent they can solve the problem it can solve the problem fine modern management approaches recognize that people are complex and variable employees need change over time people possess a range of talents and capabilities that can be developed so all of us have got talents right but the modern uh, management approach is it has to be developed right everyone right everyone organizations and managers therefore should respond to individuals with a wide variety of managerial strategies and job opportunities key themes to be considered as the 21st century progresses includes the following the commitment to meet customers need 100% of the time okay guides organizations towards quality management and continuous improvement of operations total uh, today's global economy is a dramatic influence on organizations and opportunities abound to learn new ways of managing from practices so see it's not like we can learn from the practices in other countries too right is it clear organizations must reinvest in their most important asset their people if organizations cannot make the commitment to lifelong employment they must commit to using attrition to reduce headcount they will not receive cooperation unless they make it clear that their people will be will not be working themselves out of job okay so see if uh, i am the employee of certain company okay and they are not giving me certainty about the job i will never be committed and their customers won't be happy in that case right because if i am not committed being the uh, professional working there how am i going to satisfy the customers right so if uh, an organization keep the can keep the workers happy then only you know they will give their 100% right they will cooperate fully fine managers must must excel in their leadership responsibilities to perform numerous different roles theory developed during the industrial revolution when new problems related to the factory system began to appear managers were unsure about how to train employees many of them non english speaking immigrants or deal with increased labor dissatisfaction so they began to test solutions as a result classical management theory developed from efforts to find one best way to perform and manage tasks the school of thought is made up of two branches that is classical scientific so now we are dealing with classical theories of management fine which was being used a long 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 time back okay now Uh, can you just write in short about the uh, previous theory we have done kaizen's approach and quality school of management you have to write it in short you have to explain it to me in short can you write it down please and then we'll switch over to the classical theories of management okay so please start doing it Yeah, please write it down.
anyone out there? Yeah, please write it down. Qualitative School of Management in short. Yeah, please write it down. Are you writing it? So, Jeet, Ajit, Kelvin, Prabha, Vijay, Nixon, Praveen, and Darshan. Okay, okay. Uh, Darshana, you have to write about qualitative theory of management, qualitative school of management, whatever you understand by that, uh, you have to write it in the form of a paragraph, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. You have to write about qualitative school of management as well as Kaizen's approach. And what do you understand by re-engineering? You have to write that down as well. And once you're done, just let me know. Uh, once you're done, just write finished in the chat box.
Is everyone done with the same? Is everyone done with the same? Please let me know. Okay, fine. So let's do, uh, deal with the classical school of management. Okay. Okay, let's deal with it. All right, so I'm going to put it here on the board and then we want to classical schools of management. The time, you know, the ones at the time of industrial revolution and all. Okay. All right. So please take heed to the board. Now, classical school of management. One of the first schools of management thought the classical school management theory developed during industrial revolution when new problems related to factory system began to appear. Managers were unsure about how to train employees because many of them were English speaking, non-English speaking immigrants, okay, or deal with increased labor dissatisfaction. So they began to test solutions. As a result, the classical, so behind every theory there is some situation. So here the situation was. Uh, during industrial revolution, many of the workers uh, came from non-English, um, you know, countries, non-speaking countries. So, uh, you know, it was um, quite tough to, you know, like train them. And also there was a dissatisfaction among the laborers and it was increasing like anything. As a result, the classical management theory developed from efforts to find the one best way to perform and manage tasks. Okay. This school of thought is made up of two branches, classical scientific and classical administrative. Okay, described in the following section. So, is it clear how this, what gave birth to this school of management, that is classical school of management? Is it clear, everyone? What gave birth to this school of management? Clear? All right. Now. The classical scientific branch arose because of the need to increase productivity and uh, so this uh, theory has got two branches that is classical scientific and classic, classical administrative. So what gave birth to this classical scientific branch that is need to increase productivity and efficiency. Uh, the emphasis was on trying to find the best way to give the, get the most work done by examining how the work process was actually accomplished and by scrutinizing the skills of the workforce. So, if we can scrutinize the um, you know skills of the workforce, that means people who are working in an organization, okay, then we can give them work which they can perform promptly, right? If I can recognize your skills, I will give you the work which you are very good at, right? So, this is how if when we can scrutinize the performance of our you know workers, their skills. In that case, you know we can we can reach to the conclusion like what kind of best abilities they have got, right? which is their best area and can give them work accordingly. This will increase the productivity, right? Correct? The classical scientific school owes its roots to several major contributors including Frederick Taylor, Henry Gantt and Frank and Lenin Gilbreth. Okay? Now, Frederick Taylor is often called the father of scientific management. Taylor believed that organizations should study tasks and develop precise procedures. As an example, in 1898, Taylor calculated how much iron from rail cars, bethlehem steel, plant workers could be unloading if they were using the correct movement tools and steps. Okay, the results was an was an amazing 47.0 tons per day instead of merry 12.5 tons. So if uh, we can, uh, if workers can use the correct movements of the body, steps and tools you know they can uh, the results will be amazing instead of getting just 12.5 tons each worker 
you know, they will get 47.5 tons per day. In addition, the redesigning by redesigning the shovels, the workers used, Taylor was able to increase the length of the work time and therefore decrease the number of people shoveling from five. So if they can increase, uh, redesign the shovels, the number of workers needed would be just 140. As of now, 500 workers are working. Okay. He developed an incentive system that paid workers more money for meeting the new standard. So he said that, okay, if you are going to meet the new standard to the workers, we are going to pay you more money. Productivity at Betham Steel, Bethlehem Steel shot up overnight because they were being promised that they will be given something. Okay. As a result, many theorists followed Taylor's philosophy when developing their own principles of management. Henry Gant, an associate of Taylor's, developed the Gant chart. A bar graph that measures planned and completed work along each stage of production. Based on time instead of quantity, okay, volume or weight, this visual display chart has been widely used planning and control tool since its development in 1910. Now, what was the role of Frank and Lennon uh, Gilbreth, a husband and wife team? Studied job motion. What is the job motion now? In Frank's early career, career as an apprentice bricklayer, he was interested in standardization and method study. He watched brick layers and saw that some workers were slow and inefficient. Brick layers, you must be knowing, the bricks which are being used uh, to build the houses and all. Okay, and others were productive. So he might have noticed that some people, some workers who were, you know, uh, might be carrying this bricks, okay, uh, they were slow and some were very productive. He discovered that each brick layer used in a different set of motion to lay bricks. From his observation, Frank isolated the basic movements necessary to do jobs and eliminated unnecessary motion. Workers using these movements raise their output. So see, if I have to do something and you know I am doing it as, as it has to be done, then obviously I would be able to, I will be productive for the company. This is what he is trying to prove through this example. Okay. This was the first motion, motion study designed to isolate the best possible method of performing a given job. Okay, so a uh, lot of people have got necessary skill set for doing a job, but they don't use it as it has to be used for that specific job. If they can use it, they can be very productive for the company. Later, Frank and his wife studied job motion using a motion picture camera and a split second clock. When her husband died at the age of 56, Lillian continued their work. Thanks to these contributors and others. The basic ideas regarding scientific management developed, they include the following. So this we are going to cover in the next class that is tomorrow okay we are going to complete this okay the classical school of management fine and i hope quantitative school of management and Kaizen approach is clear to you right okay is it clear yeah thank you so much don't forget to fill the feedback form if you have, if you want me to cover something specific in class, if you have got any grudges, okay, uh, then please write it down in the feedback form itself. Thank you so much. Okay. And do fill whatever you feel like about the class in the feedback form. You know, don't give, you know, false reasons there. Don't fill wrong things there. Whatever you feel about the class, just feed genuine things in the feedback form. Okay. Okay. Don't be afraid that I'm going to lose grades or she's going to scold me because I'm just fill whatever is genuine. Fine? Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. See you tomorrow.